J.D. Vance is a vocal critic of illegal immigration, arguing that it has caused deep damage to both the U.S. economy and its workforce. He believes illegal immigration distorts the labor market by offering businesses a steady stream of cheap labor, which in turn suppresses wages and obstructs efforts to reintegrate millions of unemployed or disengaged Americans back into the workforce. Um, the reason that there is a housing crisis is that not enough houses have been built. And that we have 25 million people who shouldn't be here. Well, I mean, this is the thing. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's both. Um, I, I know you do. I, I don't think that many um, people who look into this agree with you, but about a third of the construction workforce in this country is Hispanic. Of those, a large portion are undocumented. So how do you propose to build all the housing necessary that we need in this country by removing all the people who are working in construction? Well, I think it's a, it's a fair question because we know that Back in the 1960s, when we had very low levels of illegal immigration, Americans didn't buy houses, didn't build houses. But, but of course they did. And I'm being sarcastic, of course, in service of a point, Lulu, the assumption that because a large number of home builders now are using undocumented labor, that that's the only way to build homes. I think, again, the country is much bigger. A fundamental the need is much bigger. I mean, I'm not arguing in favor of illegal immigration. I'm asking how you would deal with the knock on effect of your proposal to remove millions of people who work in a critical part, part of the economy. Well, I think that what you would do is you would take, let's say, for example, the 7 million prime age men who have dropped out of the labor force. And you have a smaller number of women, but still millions of women prime age who have dropped out of the labor force. Um, you, you absolutely could re-engage folks into the American labor market. This is, I think- To work is, in construction? Of course you could. I mean, so the unemployment rate is 4.1%. Most but the people unemployment who, rate, Lulu, this, this is important. But most people who don't work can't work in the regular economy. They're in the military. Their parents, they're sick. They're old. They might not want to work in construction. The unemployment rate is not, does not count labor force participation dropouts. And again, this is one of the really deranged things that I think illegal immigration does to our society is it gets us in a mindset of saying we can only build houses with illegal immigrants. And we have 7 million, just men, not even women, just men who have completely dropped out of the labor force. People say, well, Americans won't do those jobs. Americans won't do those jobs for below the table wages. They won't do those jobs for non-living wages. But people will do those jobs. They will just do those jobs at certain wages. Think about this from the perspective of an American company, okay? I want them to go searching in their own country for their own citizens. Sometimes people who may be struggling with addiction or trauma, get them re-engaged in American society. We cannot have an entire American business community that is giving up on American workers and then importing millions of illegal laborers. That is what we have thanks to Kamala Harris's border policies. I think it's one of the biggest drivers of inequality. It's one of the biggest reasons why we have millions of people who have dropped out of the labor force. Why try to re-engage an American citizen in a good job if you can just import somebody from Central America who's going to work under the table for poverty wages? It is a disgrace, and it has led to the evisceration of the American middle class. During a discussion about the U.S. housing crisis, the host attributes the problem to insufficient construction, a point Vance acknowledges. However, he pushes back by highlighting that much of the construction labor force consists of illegal immigrants, many of them Hispanic. He raises the question of how the country can expand housing while simultaneously relying on undocumented workers, stressing that this dependence on illegal labor only exacerbates deeper economic issues. Vance's argument centers on the untapped potential within the domestic labor market. He points out that approximately 7 million working-age American men, as well as many women, have completely dropped out of the workforce. According to him, re-employing this group, particularly in sectors like construction, could resolve both labor shortages and broader socioeconomic problems. Vance contrasts this potential workforce with the current system, where employers are more inclined to hire undocumented workers at below market wages. He rejects the notion that Americans are unwilling to work in industries like construction, arguing instead that they would take these jobs if offered fair, legal wages. He harshly criticizes the practice of importing cheap labor from Central America, saying it not only drives down wages, but also ignores the need to invest in struggling American citizens, those grappling with issues like addiction or trauma. Vance sees this reliance on illegal labor as a societal problem, one that underpins other economic issues such as income inequality and the erosion of the middle class. In his view, 
by allowing businesses to sidestep the domestic labor market in favor of cheaper, undocumented workers. U.S. immigration policy under the Biden administration has abandoned the American working class. He describes this dynamic as having a deranged effect on society, with companies prioritizing profit over their own citizens. Vance's concerns extend beyond just economics. He frames illegal immigration as a matter of national sovereignty, economic self-reliance, and the dignity of labor. He argues that reintegrating unemployed Americans into the workforce is both economically sound and morally essential. For him, the path forward lies in prioritizing American workers over illegal immigration, emphasizing law and order, border security, and policies that push businesses to invest in the nation's own citizens rather than exploiting foreign labor for short-term gain.